Hey guys, today we are going to look at eight crazy foil prices. So let's start with Exploration from Conspiracy. Conspiracy has a lot of really good cards that have just snuck up in price and the box price has remained very low. This might be because of the oversupply, but the card quality in Conspiracy, like you cannot compare it to Masters because Masters is two and a half times as much but it's pretty good. It, definitely a lot more, lot stronger cards than something like Ixlan or Kaladas. The cards here are eternally playable. So Exploration is now a $15 non-foil and a $38 foil. I expect it's foil to just continue to go up. I mean, this is, this is legit. It's a legit card. In ED8. Next, Sword of Light and Shadow. So out of the bunch, I'm going to say this one is interesting as speculation. $41, $42. I saw on eBay for $35. This is the original art. And you do have the invention version of it. And it has been reprinted. But nothing beats original foils. So if you wanted my opinion on what the pimpish version would be it would be the original foil although the inventions look very nice there's something about the frame and then the card art and it's very iconic in my opinion so light and shadow the multiplier is not there so something like this should have a very high multiplier but again having been reprinted and having been a invention does hurt its foil price so it's probably worth looking into I would imagine that eventually it will hit $50, $75 again. Nakomiba, this is a $25 foil. It is in Future Sight. The Future Sight foil is much more valuable. I'm pretty sure this card has been reprinted recently. But the foil, the reason that this multiplier exists is the Future Sight card frame is a lot different. And it's unique and it looks beautiful in foil. Future Sight is such an interesting set when you talk about what is pricey, like just the random priciness of that set. And as we saw from that cat guy, the foils of Future Sight, given that fact that there's not that many of them, they're, when something spikes, it will definitely be the foil. So something to keep in mind, Future Sight definitely a great place to buy cheap foils and hold on for long term and hope that something happens to them like for instance there's a cat deck now merchant scroll this is a 57 dollar foil that's insane and it's only a, it's about four dollar regular card merchant scroll any tutors are very good this one eighth edition it's not seventh edition but eighth edition is pretty close and as we've seen seventh edition the foils are outrageously expensive eighth edition is following suit now We've seen this pattern with Unlimited. So after Alpha and Beta st started spiking, then Unlimited spiked, and now even Revise is spiking. So 7th edition foils will always consider the most iconic and most valuable. But in this case, we have something that is 8th edition, and a lot of the other 8th edition cards, in particular foils, are also going up in price. So there's some that you should keep your eyes on because it should be kind of interesting to see where uh, all the prices end up. All right, next, the next card we're going to take a look at is Magus of the Moon, another card from Future Sight, which is a $98 foil. Magus of the Moon, Blood Moon got a reprint, and Magus of the Moon is going to get a reprint. Now, the foil is literally not going to be affected. And the reason being is Future Sight is such, again, such a strange set. Not many people bought Future Sight. Future Sight, obviously the home of Tamagoyf, but Tamagoyf wasn't what it used to be, and it was kind of gimmicky. I remember playing it, and what was it, Planar Chaos, which they took iconic cards and they flipped the color. Like, um, the Cunning, the, the one, they just flipped Harmonize. Instead of Concentrate, which was blue, they, they called it Harmonize and made it green. So it was very gimmicky. Future Sight was all these amazing card frames, all these interesting cards. But it kind of didn't feel like a coherent set. I guess that was the 
point of it. All right, Seedborn Muse, as you can see from that little blip, that was the banning of the Prophet of Kufix. This card in foil, I like it a lot. I think it's hard to reprint this card, uh, mainly because it is a spirit. And also, I'm pretty sure they don't like this type of ability because they ban Prophet of Kufix, which is, I mean, you played them together. You always, so even if Prophet Kufix became unbanned, this would still be very playable. $48, almost $50 foil. That's honestly, I think, low. A lot of times when you look at, it does have a reprint. I believe the reprint is an eighth edition. It's one of the core sets. When you look at cards, you want the foils to be from the first set they came out to be. Uh, that, I think, has will hold value a lot better than an invention. Inventions are kind of a hit or miss. It really depends on if it's new artwork and it's better artwork. Okay, Lightning Helix is getting a reprint in Iconic Masters. This is a beautiful card in foil. I own one, and it is just gorgeous in foil uh, for original. Always go with original. Always go with original foils. That's the way to do it. Uh, I'm not a fan. So Exploration doesn't have a foil. It's from Urza Saga, and that was the only time I think it was ever printed. But if you can go with the foil, go with the first time the card was available in foil. And then you're going to you're gonna be, it's going to be good for you. Uh, the same with Dorad, the same with Counterspell, Brainstorm. All these things, you got to go with the first time it's printed to grab the foil. And that one will have a lot of value. So though Lightning Helix has been reprinted a bunch of times and it was in Johnny which is an interesting artwork. That one's really good. Now, what is the Omega Foil? The Omega Foil is a foil on the reserve list. Yes, a foil on the reserve list is going to be quite valuable. I mean, it should be pretty obvious why that would be the case. Uh, it is on a reserve list. It's never going to be reprinted again. And on top of that, and most importantly, this is actually a good card. So it has all the factors that you would want. Um, it's a good card. It is on a reserve list. It's an old card. One of the first foils, actually, Urza Legacy. Urza Saga did not have foils. Urza's Destiny also had foils. And it is actually playable. So great speculation, and I expect it to only go up in price. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.